The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors. With so many people living longer, the fear of outliving your money becomes a reality for many of us. Will I be a financial burden? Will I outlive my money? How will I be remembered? My name is Neil Himmelstein, president of Main Street Planning Group. Please contact me by visiting MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631-647-4694. I will introduce you to strategies that will guarantee you will not outlive your money, that can guarantee you will not be a burden on your loved ones. Through a collaborative approach, Approach, we will uncover solutions that offer tax efficient strategies, lifetime income, and legacy planning. Choice, organization, direction, and education. That is the code we stand behind. Contact MainStreetPlanningGroup.com. That's MainStreetPlanningGroup.com or call 631 647 4694. And listen to me every Friday at 3 p.m. as I host the Main Street Code for Financial Success, right here on 1039 LI News Radio. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. I'm here every Friday at 3 o'clock. Uh, you're listening to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. We talk about choice, organization, direction, and education. We work with hundreds of advisors across the United States, whether they be as CPAs, attorneys, when you're doing your estate plan, or long-term care planning, retirement planning, uh, disability planning we talk a lot about, and life insurance, uh, very important features in your protection in life. And today we have a special guest with us, Matt Daly, for a repeat performance. Hey, good to be back. How are you, Matt? Matt was here with us last week, and, you know, Matt Matt is a great guy in the industry. I'm so happy. I've just met him, I'd say, a couple months ago. Uh, I met him because we, we work in with an organization called NAFA, NAFA is like our Bar Association. It's the National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors. Mm -hmm. It's the oldest running insurance, uh, predominantly insurance and financial advisor uh, advocacy group uh, out there. We're just not an advocacy group. We're like the Bar Association for Attorneys. And I, I like to, if you're interviewing a financial advisor or interviewing an attorney or an accountant or you want to work with somebody, ask who, who they belong to. Who do they work with? What are they doing for their industry? What kind of extra education are they taking to to further their industry? I think it's important to work with professionals. Would you agree, Matt? I couldn't agree anymore. And the comparison, I think, to the bar is I haven't heard that, and it's a wonderful one because the level of professionalism that NAFA brings to the industry as a whole but to us as advisors and to our clients and potential clients is second to none. Right. So – we're card-carrying members. I've been a card-carrying member for many years. Uh, as a matter of fact, on my business card, I put the logo NAFA right on there because uh, I, I happen to be uh, vice president and running programming for the state of NAFA right now. Uh, I was a past Suffolk County uh, president, and I've always been committed to the cause. I'm committed to my profession, uh, as is Matt. And Matt is, is uh, what do they call a, um, a unicorn? Mm. Uh, because, and I'll tell you why he's a unicorn. A unicorn's a good thing. I mean, we had, you know, Porzingis, who was a unicorn for the New York Knicks. <laughs> um, a unicorn is somebody who's unique in the industry. You know, the problem with this industry uh, as a whole, as many industries, it's gotten uh, stale. Um, life moves on, change is inevitable, it keeps happening, it keeps happening, and the industry is changing dramatically. Yet, people don't wake up one day and say, hey, I want to go in the insurance business. Not that I know. No. Right. So, people don't understand. And and as I was saying last week, we, we were talking about, I worked with Long Island Works, mainly for my kids, but but it was interesting. It did a bunch of different things. One is we brought the businesses, and I didn't invent Long Island Works, but I was asked to run it for my school system. But we brought businesses from the, around the area, whether they be veterinarian, whether they be Brookhaven Labs, uh, into the school. Um, and because it made so much sense for me that my kids, my kids always had the greatest open mind and were never afraid to talk to the business, the local business person, the 
And you know, part of part of keeping Long Island strong is, and my big thing was, is although it didn't work, is I wanted to give no show the kids that there's a million opportunities right here on Long Island. Yep. That once you go away to college, of course it didn't work. My daughter lives in Hawaii, and my son lives in Denver, and I hope you're listening. I love them to death. Uh, but they found their own way, and I always wanted them to find their own way. Yep. And they found their passion. And uh, while it wasn't working with me per se, but you, you, who knows, long term, but you found your passion. Sure. And Matt, tell us, you know, you probably did a lot of different things before you came into this business i did yeah so uh, i mentioned last week that i got sober after i got sober i actually left long island to um i didn't follow your kids but in a similar fashion i thought there was opportunities that were better elsewhere and uh, i ran a sales team in pennsylvania for a little while i did some uh medical device sales for a little while and then um life events changed happened i came home and i took a few interviews and Um, actually it was like a crossroads for me. It was early 2012 and I had an interview for a really high paying job, but it seemed stressful. And I had an opportunity for a laid back job that, um, my, as my dad mentioned, so, um, lovingly might fit my personality better. And he said that lovingly because at the time I was starting my collection of tattoos and he said, maybe that'll be a better environment for you. And, um, I took that job and it it was a lower paying job, but it had a nice opportunity for a higher commission. And that was at a marketing firm. And when I got there, I knew nothing about marketing, nothing about branding, nothing about any of those things. But all of those lessons that I learned at the marketing firm, uh, I've taken and been able to apply to insurance and to apply to how my small businesses that I work with in insurance work and grow. And it makes me feel... uh, more understanding of what they go through on a day-to-day basis. And probably the most important thing to come out of trying new opportunities before following my father into insurance was I I ended up meeting my wife at that marketing firm. So, you know, um, Kaylin, if you're listening, you better be listening. Same as Neil just said, you better be listening. But, um, you know, you kind of got to follow a little bit of a passion and then find something that fits you. And, And for younger people that are trying new things like, Don't just give up right away. Try something new. Explore opportunities. You know, the economy's tough. Things are hard right now. But uh, there are great opportunities out there, including insurance, including financial services. If you could land in a good spot with a good team around you, with good people to help bring you up, man, it could be really, really rewarding rewarding for you. Absolutely. And I know before I was in this business, I did import-export. I sound like uh, Costanza. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I've been told that. uh, I wasn't a huge uh, Jerry Seinfeld fan, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but I truly was, and and you know, I tried to branch out into bringing in different things, and I found that um, I couldn't do it alone. And that was the biggest thing that I learned about doing my own business prior to this. I was in the food business, and I thought I could do this and do that, and and I had some success, but I had some failure, and I and, and but like you said, you learn. And the biggest thing I learned is you need other people. Yep. You cannot do everything yourself. You need mentors in yep. this world. I'm 64 years old. I still have mentors. Yep. Okay. Matt, much younger, but he still has mentors. And and I find he could, it, it's not an age thing either. Matt is my mentor. Okay. Some of the th- qualities and things that Matt does, I can use in my practice as he can in his practice. Thank you. And one of the greatest things about our industry, and I talk about NAFA and what I like, is you can be with somebody who's a New York Life agent, American National agent, an independent agent, a general wholesaler like I am, and we all share ideas. It's not like we're we're like, it's the only industry that I know of that we can share ideas and learn and grow from each other. Oh. Oh, I don't disagree at all. I, actually, I mentioned in my speech, right, that, you know, all of us in this room here, we, we're not in competition with one another. We're working towards a common goal, which is helping to provide solutions for people who don't know that we have solutions to problems that they don't know they have. And right. that's the biggest thing is working together. And you mentioned mentorship. And I've had some of the greatest mentors in the world, my father, and I now look up to you and a gentleman named Chuck Smith. And there's people that have guided me in my career uh, to get me to the point where I am. And I heard a really funny quote about 
mentors recently, and it was mentors occasionally can be tormentors. And you have to realize that when you're surrounding yourself with people that are trying to bring you along and guide you, sometimes you just have to follow blindly and you may not like the path that you feel they're leading you on, but they might know best for you. And it might feel like it's being you're being tormented, but I promise you, you're not. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Well, and again, this is a, a long road and it's a good road, um, but every road has bumps mm. and every road's got turns and nobody's life is a straight arrow and we're here to help you guide you and and maybe to help you think about things that you may not want to address or don't think you have to address and that's a lot of what we do anyhow you're listening to the main street code for financial success uh this is neil himmelstein if you want to reach me 631-647-4694 and matt how can i get a hold of you Best number is 631-744-3350. And we'll be right back after a break. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Main Street Code for Financial Success. I'm your host, Neil Himmelstein. You can always reach me at 631-647-4694. And today I'm blessed with my guest, Matt Daly. Uh, Matt was here last week and I thought we should talk two weeks in a row because you know one of the things i love about matt is he he gave me a a a little synopsis so so i wouldn't you know lose my mind here uh and it says trust the process Mm. one step at a time now that means something to me and it probably means something to everybody if they think about it what does that mean to you matt yeah so i've mentioned it a couple of times now over the last two weeks but um getting sober was the biggest turning point in my life. And um, when you get sober, you have to take things literally one step at a time. If you try to think about spending the rest of your life without alcohol or without drinking or without, you know, using substance, it's a long time, especially for me, I was 25 years old. It was looking down the barrel of a very long life, but doing it one day at a time or one moment at a time became really easy. And, um, that became applicable to life in general. Just, you know, get up today and take it one step at a time, you know, go to work today and do it one step at a time, one appointment at a time, if you're going to apply it to work. And, um, you know, a couple of years goes by and you don't remember how long things took you to achieve. You're just glad that you took the time to do them. And, And that process of doing things one step at a time, that helps you build a little bit of sweat equity. It helps you build a little bit of, um, perseverance in in going through things and i i think that's what makes us who we are yeah absolutely and i appreciate you and i appreciate what you do it's um it's 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 tremendous and and i hope that you continue on your path and and continue well and not only that i hope that you know if you have kids and stuff that don't know what they want to do matt's a great resource to talk to about about the about the process about moving forward about you know, wonderful thing. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, we mentioned it last week, but I want to go more in depth. Um, COVID certainly has changed the world quite a bit. Yeah. The world is evolving very quickly. Um, businesses have evolved very quickly. And, you know, the biggest thing in this world is change is inevitable. Right. How you embrace it, how you embrace change is what makes you successful. Mm. And I firmly believe that. And I know in my business, when COVID hit, uh, is when I started doing the radio. It's been about, actually about two years since I started. I actually checked the date. And, you know, a lot of my business comes from other reps who bring me business, but I found that they weren't seeing people face to face and they didn't know, they froze. Yep. They absolutely froze. If you didn't go on Zoom and have meetings or or adapt in different ways, your business kind of died. Yeah. So right now we have, we're going through another change and people need to realize it and embrace it. And that's artificial intelligence. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love quotes. There's another quote. It says change is inevitable. Growth is optional. Right. Right. And, um, you know, the option was either, you know, adapt or be left behind. And, um, for me, uh, COVID was a, a big awakening. I, I became really big on Zoom, and uh, which allowed me a lot of opportunities outside of New York and to, yep. to grow my business and expand. But now looking at 
uh, chat GPT as, as something, right? Um, the schools are really worried about it because kids can go in and, and write an essay and you, just by typing in what the topic of an essay is. But from a business perspective, you know, seeing what AI can do for helping to explain people to people what our products can do or helping to um, curate, uh, you know, a targeted message to a certain uh, Lyft Farms, for instance, that makes sense to them versus the jargon that we use in our industry. It's become such a simple way to take things that were 10,000 feet in the air and put them right in front of people. It's it's an amazing opportunity. It is. And, you know, um, my, both my kids are like so far ahead of me in this area, but we we've, we've talked about this. And both of them have taken it in such extreme, crazy ways, even before I even knew about this mm. chat GPT. And I'm like, what? So, you know, my daughter's a brilliant with social media and this and that, but she's not She's not the best at, let's say, getting her word out or getting her message out. This has helped her get her message out. Yeah. I, it's it's helped her. My son had to do a big job interview for replacement people. Now he's in fraud with with Robin Hood with a big company. I guess I shouldn't, whatever. So, but he had to hire some people. So one of the tools was well, he's not an expert in human resources and. You know, what kind of questions should I ask somebody coming in this very specific area? Uh, and um, he asked ChatGPT, and it helped guide him to some good questions and open-end questions. And I have to confess, there was a radio show or two, and I was like, well, I want to talk about this particular area, and where am I going with this? And I ch- put it in ChatGPT. Oh, it gave me like, it gave me like, didn't give me the answer, but it gave me some ideas of, where I can go with things. Track the run on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and what's nice is, and we had Rob Fishman on a couple of weeks ago at, at, that talked to us uh, about, you know, he, he's a specialist in business development. He talked about how chat GPT can interact with you and adapt and learn from you and say, no, well, I want to talk about this, but let me talk about it in this detail or let me talk about it at this level or let me, let me talk about it on a sixth grade level, metaphysics or whatever. And it will do that for you, and it can help you in your business and help guide you. And all I'm saying is change is inevitable. Embrace it. Mm. I'm not saying to use it to, to write a paper necessarily. Maybe it help you do an outline, but, you know, of course schools are afraid of it. But it's here. Use it for what it's the good parts and, and try and adapt it. And you know, that's, that's my point. Yeah, and, no, you know, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, there's a, uh, a saying that, you know, the, uh, the day before the car was invented, somebody went out and bought 5,000 horses, right? So you don't want to be left behind holding 5,000 horses. You want right. to learn about these things and at least know, you know, can it be a part of what I'm doing? Can I be educated enough at least to understand that it exists and then make a conscious decision whether I want to use it or not? Right. So, so that, that's big. And, you know, and I love having the fact that, you know, having a different perspective from different generations, uh, like we're doing right now, um, is important. Yep. Uh, interacting with your kids is important. Financial planning. Let's go, let's go 360 here. Full circle. When you're doing financial planning, and I spend a lot of time talking about long-term care. So it's such a vital thing uh, that people don't, oh, my God, it's too expensive. Well, it's not, but that's a whole other thing. Yes, it's expensive if you need care. But if you had a 70% chance, a 70% chance that your house is going to go on fire, you would buy insurance for it, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Okay. So there is a 70% chance that you're going to need some type of care once you reach the age of 65. 70% chance that one and a half of you, not only are you going to need it, but the other person is going to have to take care of the other person and or their child and be financially and emotionally strapped. So we talk about that all the time. But what we don't talk about, and we could give you statistics all day long about this, about that, what we don't talk about is what happens to that next generation? And why aren't they engaged in the planning aspect of that? Because guess what? If your mom got sick or your dad got sick, 
Are you going to let them sit in the house in, in a bathtub and naked, or are you going to run over there and take care of them? How's that going to affect your job? And this is real world. Yep. And for those of you that are caregivers, I applaud you, and I understand the stress. I was, my wife was, we know all these things. Matt and I have this great advantage of we see the future because we visited the past. Yep. And once you've experienced the past, you can predict the future to some extent. And in predicting the future, we want to protect that future. So if somebody brings up a topic, uh, get your family involved in the planning aspect of not only what's going on in your life, what's going on in your kid's life, and how's that going to impact them if something goes wrong that's why we do legacy planning. Amen. Yes. Well, you're listening to the Main Street Code and for financial success. Again, if you need to reach me, 631-647-4694 or themainstreetcode.com. Matt, our great guest, how can they get a hold of you? 631-744-3350. Fantastic. Have a great weekend, everybody. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.